Hello everybody! Welcome on board the cargo vessel Linda. My name is Laura Lang Lagerlöf and here my colleague Kim Tervonen. Hello! So we are both from Langtech and I'm the commercial manager and Kim... I'm the design engineer and product manager of the ballast water management system. Today we want to show you the installation that we have made here on the Linda for a ballast water treatment system a couple of months ago. Yeah, first a few uh, words about the vessel. So Linda is owned by our sister company Langship and uh, Linda is trading here in the North Sea Baltic area. Uh, 900 TU feeder vessel. Yeah, and uh, we have had the system here now running for for a month roughly. Yeah, a bit of a month. Months, yeah. two months. Yeah, approximately. And very good experiences until now. Okay, so we start the tour first. Yeah, from yeah. the deck office, I think, and yeah. then we'll head down to the engine room and take a look about the system itself. Yeah, Kim will show you the the details of the installation in the engine room. We hope we get the sound somehow fixed. It's a bit noisy in the <laughs> yeah. engine room. But. Okay, welcome. Let's go on the tour. Yeah. Welcome to the deck office. From here, the crew controls all the cargo operations on board the vessel. For example, now we are doing uh, unloading the cargo and unloading the containers out of the vessel. So for that, we need intake ballast water. From here, the crew can easily perform various cargo and ballasting operations. To run you through the system, I think it is more convenient to change to the still picture of the HMI panel's view. Joachim, could you please help me out? Thanks. So, in the leftmost corner, you can see the ballast water intake line, which is connected to vessel's ballast water system. Two ballast water pumps and a complex valve manifold are located just upstream of what we can see here. The first component in our system is the booster pump. It is an additional component which is used when the pressure head or capacity of the old ballast water pumps is not enough for the proper operation of the system. We recommend that there would be at least 2.5 bars at filter inlet. The next component is the filter. We are using HIDAC RF14 automatic backflushing filters with 20 micron mesh. The filter size is selected according to the desired volume flow of the system. The filter is self-cleaning and it automatically performs backflushing when pressure drops across the filter is increased enough. If it is not found feasible to install a booster pump for the system, also a backflush pump can be installed in the filter backflush line to help the filter perform well also in lower pressure conditions. In Linda, we have also installed this additional backflush pump just to see how it works. After the filter, the ballast water is run through the UV reactors or reactor. Our approach was to design only one reactor size in order to simplify the installation and use. One UV reactor is capable of treating maximum 300 cubic meters of ballast water per hour. If larger flow rate is needed, simply more reactors are installed in parallel. In Linda, we have installed two reactors, so the maximum capacity of the system is 600 cubic meters per hour. Our reactors can perform well even in extremely turbid waters and the minimum reactor specific flow rate is then restricted to 100 cubic meters per hour to ensure at least some operation capabilities even in most challenging conditions. After the filtration and UV treatment, the ballast water is fed into ballast water tanks. Our system does not require any hold time if you are operating in IMO areas and you can discharge the water instantly after giving it a second UV treatment. And speaking of the discharge operations, it is basically the same than ballast water intake operation, but the filter is just bypassed. Our system is also equipped with independent cooling loop and standby mode. This ensures that the system can be started and stopped in between ballasting or deballasting operations and restart without any delay. This is done with a cooling loop and cooling pump CP1, which you might see at the bottom most line. The cooling loop 
is automatically activated if the ballast water flow stops. The system, installed on board MS Linda, can run in standby mode more than 30 minutes, so the operation is rather flexible. Then we have received some questions through the live chat. One comes from Jürgen, who asks how the lamps and reactors are cleaned. In UV treatment based system, the cleanliness of the lamps and sensors measuring windows is the key factor for continuously good performance. In our system, the cleaning of the lamps is extremely easy and quick. Before I explain more, can you, Joachim, please change the reactor drawing? The one with the open reactor. So, to clean the lamps and reactors inside, you just stop the system, close the manual isolation valves, disconnect the reactor from power supply by turning main switch off and drain the reactor. After these quick steps are done, you can deflate the inflatable seal using HMI panel or just local control, open the latches and pull out the reactor light emitting unit. All the lamps and quartz sleeves are fixed into this removable unit and there is no need to disconnect the wiring of the lamps. When the light emitting unit is slid out from the casing, you can use for example cloth and rubbing alcohol and clean the sleeves. Once cleaning has been done, the unit is pushed back, latches closed, inflatable ceiling inflated, valves opened and main switch flipped back on. Extremely easy and simple and does not take much time or effort. The other question is about filter and its performance. James is asking the following. How does your filter perform? Does it require a lot of manual cleaning after clocking? As already said, we are using Hydac RF14 automatic back flushing filter, which is designed for ballast water treatment. According to our experiences, the filter works extremely fine, and it is doing exactly what it should be, getting rid of the organisms larger than 20 microns. In marine habitat, the filter can easily remove all organisms bigger than 20 micron, but in lower salinity brackish or fresh water, some larger side algae can push through the mess. But luckily for us, these organisms are extremely vulnerable for UV irradiation, which comes after the filtration. To improve the back flushing of the unit, HIDAC has provided us with their new improved flushing arm to ensure proper back flushing in all conditions. And for the clocking, we have not been able to get Linda's filter to clock for a single time. Which is really great, since maintenance area inside these installations is not the most spacious. If the filter someday clocks, then there is of course a need for manual cleaning. By using an integrated lifting device, it is also quite easy job. And it does not take much time if you have pressure washer on hand. Hello, Hello Tuomo. Here is Tuomo, MS Linda's second officer. How have you liked the system? Yeah, the system is quite easy to use and working well. Only a couple buttons, but it push. We oh. need ballast or ballast in the system. Okay. Easy use. Nice and to hear. Working well. Nice to hear. So, we'll let Tom to continue his work and we'll head up down to the engine room where Laura is already waiting at the engine room control. Now we are in the engine control room. This is from where, where everything is then monitored in the engine room. Meet uh, the ship chief engineer, Sander. Actually, also the Linda is equipped with the scrubber from Langtech. So here, here you can see the user interface for the scrubber. Sander is having here the ballast water treatment documents, which are all then provided by Langtech together with the component delivery.
But let's continue now to the engine room where Kim is waiting for you. Welcome to the engine room. I hope you can hear me despite of the rather loud noise. But here is the CC1, control cabinet of the ballast water management system. Here is the local control panel, which is identical to the one installed to the deck office. From here you can also control the system and monitor the function of the unit. But I think we, we can next go there and check how the unit looks like. So here it is, Lang BV600. It's two reactor combinations with one automatic back button filter. In front of the unit there are two reactors, reactor number one and reactor number two. Behind the reactors there is the filter which you might see behind the pipes and valves. The space where this unit is installed is rather narrow. The width of the space is approximately 1.2 meters and the depth is 2.5 meters. So it's a small space. This unit is able to create approximately 600 cubics per hour of treated water. So it's rather small in size when compared to the capacity of the system. Some of the components like booster pump and cooling pump are located one deck below between the ballast water pumps. I think we might be able to take a look at those pumps too. Here you can see ballast water pump number one and two and some of the interconnecting piping, which is made from Uniper. At the moment there are bilge cleaning operations ongoing, so we are able to see these pipes. Normally they are covered with pathways and grating. You might see the booster pump and cooling pump at the utmost corner of the engine room. Many thanks for joining us today for the ship visit. It was our pleasure to have you with us. We hope you got some information now and anytime. We are here to answer more questions. Soon we will put on the screen also our contact details. Yeah, email, phone, feel free to contact. We hope to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. thank you for joining. Bye! Bye!